So for those of you that have never seen this, this platform before, this is uh, the Archives Direct platform, which is where we house all of the uh, British Foreign and Commonwealth Office files that we've digitised from the National Archives UK. So the Foreign Office files for Japan is, is another module that's been added to this uh, cross-searching platform. So you can see here that you know we have files from South Africa, continental Africa, through to Latin America. Um, a few, two separate collections on the Middle East, which cover, you know, a huge amount of of foreign colonial and Commonwealth Office material from, well, uh, 1839 right through to the 1980s, as well as some smaller collections such as uh, the Nixon Papers, um, some Macmillan Cabinet Papers as well. All of this is cross-searchable through this single platform. So we're going to find the Foreign Office files for Japan and we're just going to isolate to this collection. So I'm going to click through to this collection. Again, once we've clicked through, we can see a little bit of bio here, but I'm just going to come to the Introduction tab first. So we can see a little quote here from one of our um, consultant editors. What I want to show you first is, you know, I've mentioned already that all of this material is sourced from uh, the National Archives in the UK. It is all British government material. Um, just to sh give you a quick idea of the years that are covered, uh, we're focusing on the first module today. This is the first module that's been published. And we cover the years 1931 to 1945. And we're going to be looking at a lot of material, uh, reports, memoranda relating to uh, Anglo-Japanese relations through the Second World War. Uh, reporting on, um, you know, maybe sometimes American m military aggression or vice versa, Japanese military aggression against uh, America, and as well as looking at Japanese uh, military intervention in, um, fr you know, French co French occupied Southeast Asia or parts of China as well. Um, so that is really a focus for this module: is looking at, uh, you know. Japanese imperialism in, in sort of 1930s through to the Second World War, but also looking at Japanese uh, war tactics as well, and and actually just Jap you know Japan as a country during the war. There's a few reports on the sort of political and social side of that as well. And then you know just to preview what's coming up over the next couple of years as well. Uh, we're going to cover 46 to 52 and then we're going to go back in time and do the years 1919 to 1930 uh, in 2019. The reason for this is a lot of the uh, Foreign Office files in the earlier years were actually handwritten and this means that you know because they can't be OCR'd and they can't be made full text searchable we're going to have to go back and index those manually um, you know, using sort of our academic editors and using our in-house editorial team as well. So, I um, just want to give you a quick idea, you know, we have a bit of material around our selection criteria as well and, and why we've chosen, uh, you know, the file classes that, we've, that we have. Um, just as a reference point, the main bulk of this module is the FO262, but primarily is the FO317 uh, file class here. And you can see actually see the the file class names here as well. So maybe you have some faculty that are interested in this. Um, you're going to find all of the information about the file classes, as well as some of the document types at the bottom here. Okay, just to give you a quick idea of some of the key themes and events covered as well, um, I've already mentioned, you know, uh, Sino-Japanese relations and uh, you know Japanese imperialism through the 1930s and 1940s, um, and then moving on to the war really, as you know, these are the kind of two big pillars of this first module. To scroll down a little bit more, we can look at some of the key topics. We've actually linked to each each of these files uh, under you know, each of these key topics as well. So actually this might be a really useful starting place for you should you be trialling this, or maybe even for you know undergraduate and postgraduate students as well. We've really tried to map out some of the key themes and some of the key folders uh, relating to those themes as well.
So for example, here we have war in the Pacific, you know, a massive key theme and some of the different files here that we can click through. Okay, so I'm just going to head back to, I'm actually going to head up to the right hand corner here and come to the advanced search page. So I would really recommend, you know, should you, maybe some of your, uh, the institutions you have some archives direct collections already, so this actually might be a useful tip uh, for you anyway, or, or maybe you're trialing this collection already. I would always come to the advanced search page simply because of the, the breadth of material in Archives Direct. It's really going to be a, a simpler way to get to material that you need. And the reason for that is we can you know run a search. Let's maybe run a search for uh, military occupation. The important thing is I can actually filter by collection. So let's say uh, you already have Foreign Office files for China. We can maybe run a search for both of those together. But you know, for the purpose of this webinar, I'm just going to run a search for the Foreign Office files for Japan. So I've refined by that. Um, you know, I can refine by region as well if I really want to uh, be specific. Or more importantly, I can actually refine by government department as well. Or by date. I'm just going to stick with my collection filter there, and just to give you, a, uh, you know, an idea about this page, we can see some of our previous searches here. So I've been, you know, doing some searches in the past. Uh, we've also got a list of all of our popular searches, and these are just a, a snapshot of a few of them here. Um, and these popular searches are actually sourced from the the indexing of all of these of all of the documents in Archives Direct. So it will give you an idea about uh, you know, some of the indexing terms we've used and that might help your searching process a bit more. Anyway, let's run this search military occupation and let's see what we get. Okay, so this is what the um, this is what the search results page looks like. Again, we can, you know, we've had 575 results here, that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, we can refine that search results list even more if we need to, but let's just take a look at some of the files here. Again, we can sort uh, sort this list alphabetically, we can sort it by uh, National Archives reference, so folder reference number, or by date, um, or any of these uh, any of these metrics in the dynamic column on the right hand side. So I'm going to click into this file here, which is a briefing report on uh, the spread of communism in Manchuria in 1933. So when we click into a document from our search results, it's immediately going to show um, a snapshot of where our search results, uh, of when our where our search value appears in this document. So you can see here there's actually occupation in, in, a, in a different context, obviously. Um, but this just, just shows that everything that is typed in this module is full text searchable. We can see that through the highlighting of the word occupation here. So let's head back to our search results. We come back through, uh, this is what we call our document details page. And this is where we're going to find you know, where our search value appears in the document. It's where we find out, uh, find all of our key metadata, and it's where we can actually browse all of the pages of a single document uh, using the, the thumbnail viewer at the top here. So I'm just going to head back and maybe look at another document. So let's have a look at uh, this one here called Area of Japanese Sovereignty. Again, we can see our search result here. So let's click through that. And there we are. So, one thing I should point out is a lot of these documents are uh, sort of working documents. So these haven't been, um, you know, indexed and rescribed into, you know, 
bound or printed tomes, uh, you know, much like the some of the confidential print series uh, that we saw in the sort of mid to late 19th century. These are very much working documents that are loose leaf and folded, um, and that you know, once declassified, they still have uh, handwritten notes and markings and um, sometimes redactions from. Uh, you know, civil servants and, and clerks who were working with this material at the time. So this is very much, you know, these are working documents, things that, you know, were the, the oil really that would, would, yeah. Okay, so we're going to run a few more searches just to show you the breadth of, of some of the content. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to come back to uh, the advanced search page. This time I'm going to run a search for war crimes. Again, refined by collection, so we're just going to focus on uh, the Japanese files. So apply that filter, and let's run that search. show you some of the different file names here. So one thing um, I just wanted to point out with this document is um, we can see this this uh, title is obviously, obviously espionage. We have, you know, a date, collection, and region. One thing I wanted to point out is the places, people, and topic uh, metadata fields. So these are actually all uh, clickable. These are hyperlinked, and we can actually run uh, a search through this document of these terms. Um, you can see some of the topics here. Um, this this should give a researcher an idea of, of some of the, the themes and some of the topics addressed in this file, which is extremely useful, particularly for some of these folders that are sometimes you know, over 100 pages long um, and, and contain several reports, several uh, you know, pieces of memoranda relating to different topics. Um, having this topics metadata field will give you an idea of of some of the key uh, focuses in this folder. So I'm just going to head back. This time we're going to run a search for uh, Pearl Harbor. So I'm just going to run this in the top right hand corner. Again, we're not using the advanced search, but you know, should we get you know, a lot of results here that, you know, we've got 364 results running that search for Pearl Harbor. Again, we can see a lot of results coming from confidential print North America. We can filter that out so we can, you know, use the filters at the top here, filter out to just those foreign office files for Japan. Okay, so I want to show you this document here called Japanese Troop Movements. Again, when we click through, we get a snippet all of all of our search results. Um, we can also pull the metadata down as well. You can see all of the different topics covered in this folder. I wanted to show this uh, this page here, and this is actually uh, a briefing report from. Um, the Ministry of Information, which was actually based in um, based in India, but would would you know 
would ship information through through India out to out to the Far East, you know, British consulates and embassies out in the Far East. This is actually a, a report briefing characteristics of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and what the, what those characteristics were and how British um, you know occupied territories in the Far East should prepare um, if if a similar attack was was to occur. And I think this this report particularly focuses on Singapore. So how would the British prepare if the Japanese were to attack uh, Br British possessed uh, Singapore? So you can see here they focus on the date chosen for attack, uh, you know, the, the military tactics that were used as well. So I'll just leave this up for a second so you can get a quick read of this. Actually, I'm just going to toggle, you can see on my mouse is hovering here. This is actually a toggle full screen button. So hopefully it's good to give you a flavor for how good the scans are. Move to the next page. Okay, so say we find this um, this report, and it looks really useful to us. Um, we can actually download this to PDF if we need to, or we can save it to our, our personal repository within this uh, within this database. And then, first of all, how do we download this to PDF? Well, you simply come back to the document details page here, and we just download the entire document to PDF, or we can just focus on a, a series of images. So we were just looking at a report there from image 50 so we could download you know image 50 to image 60 using the the drop downs here or as i mentioned previously we can actually add this to our personal repository i've just add, clicked the bud button there and we've added it now if i come up to uh, my archive at the top here you can already see i'm logged in it takes 10 seconds to create an, create an account really quick um, and then once I've created that account, I can I can save, uh, you know, m unlimited documents to my bookshelf. Uh, maybe I want to share that with a class, or I want to you know save those for my own research later. So we can see here, um, this is actually archives direct wide. So you can see a variety of the documents that I've saved over the past here. So reports on you know trials in South Africa. Um, as well as some material relating to arms sales in the Middle East, uh, the Cultural Revolution in China, so really varied, you know. Um, and this can all be housed in the same place, safe for you forever. If I just head back, um, the last thing I want to mention on this page is actually the citation tool as well. So we can export our cit citations to EndNote, RefWorks, or Zotero, uh, or any of the sort of plain text formats here as well. Okay, so we've got five minutes left so I thought we'd just focus on a couple more documents uh, then we can roll through any questions anybody has, um, remind everyone about you know, how to request a trial of this, if maybe the content looks of interest, uh, or you know someone who's interested and then we'll, we'll wrap up. So I'm going to run a search for uh, morale and civilian in the top right hand corner here. Okay. So again, this is an FO371 file. And this report actually, um, 
it actually focuses on uh, tactics and uh, you know a discussion of, of effectively committing psychological warfare uh, against Japanese civilians and soldiers and what tactics would be used by the British um, you know probably in in a in partnership with with North America with the United States as well so I'll just you know let you have a read of this as well again we can see the yellow highlighting here where uh, where the OCR has picked up our search search values as well So you can see here, point seven uh, it sort of lists factors that are likely to sustain morale for the Japanese people. If we move over the page. So we can see here, this talk is talking about how an attack on morale has to be about attack on ideas. So the zeitgeist, as it were. One thing I should point out is we're moving through the pages one by one here. Um, if you want to get a full view of this document very quickly, we can just move across the thumbnails tab here and we can move through. The last thing I wanted to show you is again, it's actually I've actually already saved it in my archive. And it's this uh, this document here. So I'm just going to search again in mor for morale. want to show you the the annex uh, to to one of these documents here so this is effectively a printed uh, version of uh, summarizing some of the uh, some of the memoranda and, and so telegram briefing as well okay Last document, slightly different focus than what I'm about to show you, but um, I think it's oh, it seems to be gone. Okay, let me just quickly find this document. So, uh, post-war, um, this is file in uh, FO three seven one, which focuses on post-war independence of of Korea, but also Korean people in Britain and the United States as well, and what what their activities were, how they were behaving, what their morale was like, and I, f I found this quite interesting, really from a I suppose a you know, area studies or cultural studies point of view, simply because you would assume these FO files focus just on political uh, political history or international relations. A lot of these files are actually very very relevant to uh, looking at you know looking at East Asian communities in the United States or Britain as well. So if we just you know, scrub through some of these pages here. I found this really interesting free career um, newsletter, which is attached as you know as part of a briefing report back to the British Foreign Office in London. So, if you have a faculty that may be focused on uh, you know Asian communities uh, in the United States or in Britain over the uh, Second World War period, I actually think there's a lot of material uh, in the Foreign Office files for Japan. Uh, that 
that may prove really useful as well. This isn't just a focus on the war, but also the the effects of the war uh, on you know, East Asian, uh, American, British people uh, during the time as well. Okay, I think that's all we have time for. Uh, do we have any questions? Or is there anything maybe anyone would like to take a look at while we're here? Um, if anyone would like a trial, please do t please do say. Um, yeah, we can absolutely get that set up for you over over the webinar. You can get in touch with me uh, afterwards. Get in touch with us through Facebook and Twitter as well.